Goalies, today I'm going to go over the three staple movements that you need to have built into your game if you want to have any success as a goaltender. These three movements are the shuffle, the T-push, and small adjustments. Every single time that you step on the ice for practice, you should be doing the three of these movements every single time for the first five minutes. You always have that first five minutes and these three movements will help your game so much. Number one is the shuffle. This is a staple movement. You're gonna do this so many times in practice and a game, you might not even realize you're doing it so much. So when you'd be doing a shuffle could be on a smaller pass because if it's a bigger pass, you're probably gonna be T-pushing. If you're a young goalie, you're probably gonna be doing more T-pushes than shuffles just because of strength. But as you get older, you're probably gonna be able to shuffle 75% compared to T-pushing, totally depending on where the pass is coming from and all the outside variables. So when we're talking about the shuffle, so I'm gonna demo it for you right here. So every single time you shuffle, the one thing that I notice the most, especially with younger, we're talking minor hockey goalies, is there's so much emphasis on the power of the push, but no emphasis on the pull, and that is a major problem. So this is what it looks like when you're just emphasizing on the push. Notice how my back leg dragged behind me, and that's gonna have a major effect on me to get back over top of that puck. So we have to push, but we actually have to pull just as hard to get back to that good stance as fast as we can, because if that pass goes again or anything like that, and I gotta go the other way, if my back leg is trailing behind me, well, I'm not gonna get set and then be able to go back the other way. My job as a goalie is to beat every play, get set early, to create an advantage versus the shooter. If you're not there early and you're just getting there in time because your back leg is slow and not pulling in, well then you're gonna have a major struggle in the net. What it should look like when I'm pulling, right? I have my push and now I have my pull. It's a push-pull motion. So notice how I pulled my back leg in right away to my stance, again to get me set. So I'll show you again. The first thing is that slow back leg, focus on the, on the push. And trust me, this, I see this every day. I'm on the ice every day. I see it every day with a kid. And now we have our good strong pull. Again, you can see the difference. So please make sure when you're shuffling moving forward, not only are you focusing on the push, but you're also getting, pulling that back leg back to your stance. One more note, because I see this with a lot of minor hockey goalies, when I'm pulling my back leg, I'm leaving it down on the ice. I'm leaving my skate down on the ice. I'm not doing this. That's also very important because I've seen that so many times. Remember that moving forward. Movement number two, the T push. This is a very important movement, especially for young goalies because we don't quite have the strength to get there right away. Even my WHL goalies with the Regina Pats, my one goalie, I get him to T push so much because I want him to beat every play possible. And his T pushes allow him to do that. So. When you're doing a T-push, you're tracking a pass. So if we're just doing movement drills with no pucks, our eyes have to move first. We have to understand why we're doing the movement, right? I see a lot of kids just do a T-push and don't look. Well, that's not realistic because in a game, you're actually tracking the puck, game or practice. Step by step, again, now we're getting into the T-push, okay? So a couple things. The one thing that I see all the time with young kids in minor hockey is getting on both skates, okay? So again, we turn, we push, we get on both skates and then we stop almost like a snow plow, okay? So what we have to do to master a T-push, obviously my eyes gotta move wherever I'm looking, and again, pick some spots to look at if we don't have pucks or we're not tracking a pass, okay? So our eyes have to move, okay? We're gonna pick a spot, and whatever spot that is, my eyes can't come off of it because in the game, you track the puck right to the player, your eyes don't come off that player. I see so many goalies when we're doing skating without a pass, they do this. They'll look, their eyes will come here, and then they'll finish their eyes there. That is not realistic, right? So a T-push, like, like I just said, you're tracking a pass, so eyes gotta go, boom, okay? Then I open my body. I get my chest basically pointed, and my foot pointed at where I'm looking at. So I look there. Now look at my chest, it's almost facing that. So I get it right to it and then I can move. 
right to it and notice that I push with one foot, I stop with the other. The one thing that I notice with T-pushes with young kids, they focus on the push and the stop is so slow. So again, I talked about earlier with the shuffle is getting set, beating the play. If you don't stop hard in the T-push, you're not beating the play, setting early and creating that advantage for yourself. So again, this is what it looks like that I see all the time with sloppy pushes. So they push hard, and then that's the stop. Well, you're just getting there. If that puck starts coming or starts going back the other way, well, you're just getting set. You're not creating that advantage. So what I want to do is I want to snap my eyes, push hard. I want to stop hard in case I can go back the other way, get myself ready, create that advantage. Goalies, like I said, please be realistic with your eyes when you're doing these skating movements without pucks because it's so important. You got to make it realistic. So eyes move. I pivot wherever I'm looking. If it's just a small one, I might pivot just to here. If it's a deep backdoor pass from the top of the zone to the low dot in the circle, well, I might have to really open up so I can get to the angle. That is another thing, is finding the angle and getting to it as fast as possible. My eyes will tell me where I need to go and the rest of my body to get me to that angle, open to it, All right? Eyes, open to it. If I don't look, if I look late, that's gonna happen. That's slow, that's not to the angle. Remember these tips moving forward when you're doing T-pushes and you should have a lot of success. Movement number three, small adjustments. These are absolutely everything to me. And when you would use these, so there's two types. Obviously there is with T-pushes too, how there's elevated and, and in my stance. But for the adjustments, when my stick would be off the ice, would be a puck carrier walking the blue line. When my stick would be down, it would be a puck carrier cutting through the middle of the ice right above the tops of the circles. If they break those circles, I'm gonna be leaving my feet down and I won't be able to do small adjustments because they could shoot at any moment. So small adjustments, what are they? It's moving with a puck carrier. The reason that we don't want to shuffle, for a couple of reasons, shuffling, I leave my foot down. So that means my inside edge hits the ice, which causes resistance, which causes me to be slow, okay? So that's number one. The second thing is a shuffle could get me ahead of the puck so easily because it's a big, strong push. The thing about small adjustments is they're just tiny. So it helps you to stay square and stay with the puck's carrier so easily. And that is a thing of beauty. So when we're doing small adjustments, what we got to do is unlike the shuffle. So the shuffle, I leave my skate down. Small adjustments, we're actually picking our back foot up and they're just little steps. I'm not pushing because when I push, my feet get apart and when my feet get apart, I hit my inside edges and I slow down. That is not the case with small adjustments and I see it day after day with kids that haven't done very many of them. They start doing small adjustments and they end up like this. And, you, and that's slow. The point of small adjustments is to stay light in the ice, stay quick and to stay on the puck. And like I said, if they break the circles and get in tighter, well I'm going to be leaving my foot down, totally different story. Okay, so when we're doing small adjustments, the number one thing that I tell kids is two things. Number one, don't let your feet get far from one another. That is the first thing you have to think about. The second thing to think about is the sound. Is my foot sounding like this? Or is it sounding like this? The first one, is how it should sound. I'm more on my neutral blade, not so much on my inside edge. If I hear this, I'm doing it incorrectly. So think about that noise and listen to your skates when you're doing it and you'll be able to know, okay, when I'm hearing that bad sound, it's usually because my feet are getting too far from one another and you'll be able to correct yourself if you focus on the noise. So again, if we're doing small adjustments, all it is, is little steps, right? Or if it pucks top of the circle. Okay, I'm picking up my back skate, being quick, staying with the puck carrier. Focus on these three movements. You do them for five minutes every single ice time. I promise you, your game will improve. But don't just do them. 
do them with a purpose, think about everything that I said, remember everything that I said moving forward, and it'll help you have success. If you have no idea what drills to be doing, check out my Elite Edgework program. I built it, it's a skating program with downloadable practice plans that you can take to your own team practices, doing many movements like this and many variations to help your foot speed and for you to become an elite skater.